How does it feel like to be the most handsome man in Glade oh, Show? Dude, not even. <laughs> he doesn't even know where he is right now. Just stay right there. I'll be right back. Dude. Whose camera is that? Is that yours? Hold on. It's not my camera. It's not your camera? Is that yours? No. Excuse me. One second. Okay. Good. No, that's not that's not my camera. Is that my camera? Is that your camera? No, uh, no, hey, what are you guys one. doing? What are you guys doing with my no, camera? Shit. Oh, Sanders gonna kill me! Stop! Come back! Welcome back everybody. Is that what he does? Um I haven't done a video like this in I don't know, what? Four days. Twelve months now. It's been a year since I've done a video like this. Welcome back everybody. 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 Welcome back, all you meat lovers. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back, tough guys. Let's do the damn thing. Well, that was an exhausting three days, four days, whatever it was. I'm tired. But we got a lot of cool stuff, like a lot of really cool stuff. It's a different show this year. Um, and I got some things that I wish I could show you. I can't, unfortunately. But with that being said, I should probably take just a quick moment to thank the sponsors of this channel. WorkSharp, they're amazing. They make really cool sharpeners. And this is your reminder, use your shit, sharpen your knives. And I wanna also thank Big Idea Design. They make amazing pens and titanium pocket tools. And they make one of my favorite fixed blades, the Lookout. And of course, the newest sponsor is Huckberry. Um, some of the clothes you've seen me wearing in recent videos, if you like that, go check out Huckberry. It's your one-stop shop for all things men, especially with Father's Day coming up. Go check it out. We have a Father's Day gift guide that you should also check out. But thank you to our channel sponsors. Now to Blade Show. Um, well, where do we begin? All right, so I'm gonna preface this by saying I had never met Ken Onion before last weekend. Uh, and the first time I met Ken Onion, he was walking onto my back deck, which was kind of surreal. He's a very, very nice guy. We had a very fun cookout and a great conversation. But while we were there, he wanted to show me one of his newer prototypes. Um, I, I guess this is a prototype. Maybe it's just, I, I don't know. But this is a new knife. It is called the Buckhorn, and it is from one of his, or his new knife company, Carbon. And this thing is really nice. Like. You guys probably are pro aware that I've been on a bit of a sheep's foot and Warncliffe kick lately, and this thing rides that line. It's like a modified Warncliffe, so Warncliffe with a little bit of a belly and just a little drop here, and it's, man, this thing is beautiful, but you also have some crazy detail. So the mill lines here just look super classy, the holes, but this is 3D milling. It looks like the faux texturing that you do with lasering, but it's actually real it's milled 3d cubes and it's it feels crazy looks crazy but the contouring on this knife is just ridiculous it, it won an award at blade show this year i think for best collaboration or something to that effect it's really cool i love these little ramped thumb studs the detail that they kind of butt up against the the scales it's not really the stop you do have an internal stop pin but the fact that the pivot is a shotgun shell or modeled after a shotgun shell like there's just so much to this knife um, without being just gaudy or overbearing. It's so nice. So one, thank you, Ken, for giving me your personal or your prototype, the one out of your pocket. Thank you. Um, that is not lost on me. But once again, this is the Buckhorn from Carbon Knives. Another thing not lost on me was uh, this. This is my Unumzan, which I've carried a lot, but I have this on here now. Thanks to Tim Reeve, he gave me a prototype of their new milled clip. I hope I'm allowed to show it. If not, sorry, Tim, shouldn't have given it to me, but I, I imagine he gave it to me with the intention of me talking about it. He know he wants me to test it out because I am the destroyer of pocket clips, but there is now, um, I, I don't know anything else about this, but there is a milled option or will be, or they're just working on it. I don't know, but milled clip for Chris Reeve knives. Feels good, works on the Zahn, works on the Nkosi, Sabenza. Milled clip from uh, Chris Reeve. I ain't mad about it. You guys probably don't know Goat & Hammer. It's kind of a different facet of this whole knife industry. They are phenomenal people. They are hilarious and they are really good at 
forging. Um, they, they, they make beautiful hand forged knives. Apparently also makes pipes. And uh, you may not know that about me. I like smoking pipes. They're just so nice. They're, they're much nicer and less harsh than cigars. Um, but a handmade pipe from a, a friend of mine, I guess I would consider him a friend. It was really cool. And he was there and he was selling pipes. So I had to grab one. Go check out Goat and Hammer. They're great guys. Anyway, in passing, I, I didn't have much time to talk to Archie, but in passing, he handed me a custom middleman one for the boys. So thank you, Archie, for, I guess, considering me one of the boys. Do the best. All right. <clears throat> I guess we'll, we'll get one more out of the way. <laughs> just since we're on the topic of just like friends doing cool stuff, uh, our good friend Tom at Notorious EDC, or who is Notorious EDC, handed me a Damascus Kingpin because I told him that I only had one Damascus knife and that was my ProTech that we did the collaboration with uh, through Carry Commission. So he said, now you have two. So thank you, Tom. The, the Kingpin is really nice as a small little slip joint, but the walk and talk is even snappier now. He said it's that way with the Damascus knives, but they've also kind of just been made a little bit tougher. And the, the walk and talk's just really snappy. So thank you, Tom. Go check out the Kingpins, they're sweet. On to something that is not really inherently new. Um, I'm late to the game on this, but it's still really neat. This is the Kraken, right? That's the name of the knife. The Kraken from Pyrotech. And effectively, it kind of looks like a Chris Reeve and an Osborne had a love child. And uh, it's kind of cool in my opinion, but that's not what is the coolest thing about this knife. Obviously, you got a little crossbar, you've got a modified Warncliffe or reverse Tonto. But the cool thing about this knife, the whole reason this company exists effectively is this right here if you want to change your scale on your knife you can just pop them off it's just magnetic so there's one screw that you have to remove to remove the clip and that's it so you just run this screw out the clip can come off and then this side can come off as well and they also sent me home with a pair of clipless zerk scales which look really sweet but they are super slick like really slick like glass is what they feel like but it looks so nice in zerk i mean it looks like a mirror in the camera up here but if it's clipless like this they do have an option for a clip which is like this little magnetic anchor thing that you would use a string to attach not my deal um if you want to switch back it's literally just pop them both off because there's no clip to remove. Um, I think it's really cool, very, very neat. I like the aesthetics, it's simple, feels good, snappy, nothing to complain about with this. Um, so go check out Pyrotech if you're into that. If you wanna have a knife that you can swap scales on even easier than say, we'll say hot swappable. These, this is the true closest thing to hot swappable scales out there. It's magnets and they don't slide around. And the reason for that is because the, the, the magnet, the scale, I guess, um, or the liner is recessed inside. So the magnets hold it too, and then they're, they're milled to pretty tight spec. There's not much play. So they, they're, they're really secure on there. They said you could drop it on the floor and they don't come off. So I'm not testing that right now, but really sweet. Moving on. Since I already have this out, uh, might as well talk about it. This is the Vortex from Vero Engineering. And it's just a, a driver, a precision driver. Joseph said he was tired of using all these other precision drivers while he's assembling or disassembling knives and um, they don't spin well. And if you're unfamiliar with why you would want something that spins really well, you can run a screw out like what I just did or this right here. This is his clip. You can run that whole screw out really easily versus just turn, turn, turn. Um, that's the whole point of having a knife on bearings like, or a, a knife on bearings, a driver on bearings like this. And when running in, you can do the same thing, just kind of run it in very easily. Um, so the Vortex East first edition, 54 out of 100. It's really cool. I don't know much else about it, but it's hefty. It's It's got some, got some ass on it and I like it. It spins super well. So it's fidgety, but it's also like functional. Um, he also tossed this. I don't know if this is just a show thing. It said thank you on the package. So I imagine it's just something he gave out to uh, certain people, but it's a bit holder that's 3D printed, a micro bit holder and a driver that's similar, but smaller. Um, so it doesn't have that, that heft to it, but 
Really cool, but I don't have much information on this. And it is a collaboration with Arc Company, or I guess a collaboration, I don't really know. I don't have any info, but it is in an Arc Company pouch. But I will say this, and this is, this. he's gonna be mad about this, um, but I am gonna say it on camera. And don't you dare cut this out, Ricky. This goes in the video. I saw Joseph on Friday, first day of the show, and he had one piece of hair out of place. Oh, you did tell him that. You ruined his day. He was not <laughs> <laughs> He's like GQ, perfect. Like, yeah. but there was one hair that was like. Sorry, Joseph. Secrets out. All right. I guess the word's out. I'm a fixed blade guy now, right? I mean, judging by the reaction I got from brands at Blade Show, it's no secret I like fixed blades, and it's no secret here either. You guys know that. There are more fixed blades actually that. I have here. Uh, this one I didn't actually get at the show, but I did get the sheath and we're going to talk about this as a group in just a second. Uh, the four fixed blades I have right here, uh, we'll start with the Inyoni. So last year I believe I got a backpacker and I was back and forth between the Inyoni and the backpacker. The difference is that the backpacker is a little bit bigger, it's got a wider blade, wider handle, but other than that they're basically the exact same. Like a little small hunting fixed blade is what they're intended to be. Um, I guess this one more so that and the backpacker A. Backpacking fixed blade, I guess. Um, but there were only two of these left when I went by and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna grab one. I did tell you that I was gonna sell you the backpacker, but uh... I didn't really accept. You said, all right, but I don't, you know, I might back out on that deal. I don't know, we'll see. Mm. Uh, the next one we have is from TKEL. This is a new model. It is called the Agent 001, and I, I believe it's a collaboration with um, the Knife Junkie because they have a logo on here, so I would imagine. Uh, this is the single edge, but it does come as a double edge knife if that's your thing. And just like everything from TKEL, you have scale selections, um, has a nice little Kydex sheath, and then it came with a discrete carry concepts clip. Uh, I did not think I'd like the feel of this just waste based on the handle. I mean, it's a little more tactical than I typically carry, but it's it's a nice, comfortable feeling knife. And this, I actually really like this little pinky ramp, if we're gonna call that a swell towards the end of the handle, whatever you call it. I actually like it. It's a comfy knife. There's that. And then the first thing that happened is we barely walked through the door of the hotel, which is the Waverly in, in Georgia. And I ran into Keith Griffin of Griffin Co. And he handed me this knife. This is the X series EDC fixed blade. And yes, he's aware that Pena, Enrique Pena also has an X series. Um, he didn't know that when he created that and he's already got the packaging. So I, I don't know what's happening with that. He said he's gonna run with it, but this is effectively the Scout 2.5, but just shrunken in this dimension. And I think a little bit longer. I'm not, it's just different dimensions, but a very similar knife. And I like it. I think it's a very similar in the hand to like the Daily Customs AK-1. Like it's around the same size. Of course, this one being brass handled is, it's hefty. It's a hefty boy, but he did toss in some micarta scales, which I want to toss those on here in a second. I haven't looked at them. And a, if I keep brass, a matching uh, concealed bead. Let's see what this thing looks like with micarta real quick. So uh, obviously this is much lighter with micarta on it and I'm, typically partial to micarta, but I'm gonna be honest. Brass looks cooler. Brass looks way cooler. We'll be going back to brass, but not right now. Uh, and right there, Magnica is the blade steel on this. And that is a hollow grind. It may look like a flat, but it is hollow ground. So very cool knife. I'm, I'm excited about this one. Uh, and the last fixed blade we have here, this is from none other than McNeese PM. This is the Ridge Runner. And it's uh, honestly, kind of similar to that backpacker from uh, Chris Reeve that I got last year, but it's it's beefier, right? It's got a more round handle, fills the hand a little bit better. Um, and this one is flat ground instead of hollow. So uh, it's also CPM 3V, which I like quite a bit. I like the aesthetics of it. It's a fixed blade version of my PM Mac 2 effectively. I mean, it's a little bit bigger, but like, that's one of my favorite folders. I love that thing. And uh, this this is probably gonna be no different. Uh, I will say I don't love the sheath on this. I'm, I'm more of a taco sheath kind of guy. And I think most of these have pancake, but I'm excited about this. This is gonna be more of like camping outdoor knife than EDC, but still like, 
I love basically everything that McNeese does and this falls perfectly in line with that. Continuing down the fixed blade path, uh, like I said, I did not actually get this knife at the show. I had this knife before, but they tossed me the sheath because the sheath they gave me before does not work on any of my belts. This is the Tiny and it is a 3D printed handle with a MagnaCut blade that is, well, I don't know if this one's MagnaCut. I take that back because there's two different versions. I don't know that this one's MagnaCut. The other one I have, which is on my strap for the bag, is one that I've carried a lot. I haven't talked about this much on camera, but I've carried this pretty often. It's on my belt. I've been belt carrying a fixed blade. Who am I? Who am I? What's happening? Um, but this one is MagnaCut in 65 HRC. Like this thing is hard and it's not brittle. They have videos where they are literally cranking on this and it's 90 degrees to break it. So these things are incredibly tough. They're 3D printed, they're hollow. However, we have two other knives from UG Tools. Uh, this one is a collaboration with Bastard Knives and it's the same thing, right? A 3D printed titanium handle and this little steak knife style blade basically and it, it feels and looks like a steak knife but it's got this pocket sheath so it's quite nice and super lightweight i don't know how much this thing weighs but it is ridiculously like all these knives are super lightweight and then i did know that they were bringing this from germany for me this is their chef knife i think this one's a prototype same deal 3d printed handle um very thin blade I was, I was practicing with this thing last night or just like cutting some paper. It's wicked how sharp this thing is. Uh, and I mean, what is this, a 13 inch knife? I'm not 100% sure. The blade is at least nine inches. And weight wise, 4.6 ounces. UG Tools is doing some crazy stuff. Like not just the 3D printed titanium knives. They have these really cool little forks. They're on my keys, this right here is also 3D printed titanium. It's been on my keys for a month or so now. And it's just this little <laughs> trident looking fork, which is like an hors d'oeuvre fork, but like there've been a couple of times where this has actually been handy at a party where they got like fruit and stuff sticking out. Just go check out UG tools. Don't sleep on them. Um, and thank you guys. This is, this is awesome. For a long time now, I have sung the praises of the dendrite from Vanquist and they rolled out this new bag at Blade Show, and it's kind of like a new dendrite, but not. It's not a fanny pack where the dendrite can definitely be a fanny pack. I always wore a sling bag, but that one could be a fanny. This one can't because your, your straps are actually coming out of the top of it. So it's, it's intended to be a sling, and it is, in my opinion, way more comfortable than the dendrite if you want to wear it as a sling. But it's also bigger, which means in my case, it's gonna be heavier because I'm gonna put more stuff in it. Um, you've got a rear pocket back here. You have one main pocket, which is gonna be m considerably more capacity, but about the same setup. You have a see-through zipper pocket up front. You've got these pockets back here with organization and elastics, uh, elastic loops. And then everything is hook and loop, so you can also put inserts in there to organize even further. As you can see, I've got a lot of stuff left over from Blade Show, just knives and sharpies and all kinds of stuff shoved down in here. And then you do have a front pocket as well, which is full of cigars currently. One of these is yours, wasn't that one? Yep. There's your cigar, Ricky. Thanks, man. No problem. Um, hook and loop. And of course you've got these two straps on the side, which you could use to attach the Vanquist bottle pocket or uh, really anything. Uh, and then they also have lashing around the bottom, which you can attach to as well. Uh, one of the cooler things that I noticed was this, your, your straps are clipped on. You have quick release straps, but they pivot. I've never seen these clasps before. And then you have a quick adjust strap. So you can just pull this to lengthen or shorten your strap very, very quickly. Like everything with Vanquist, um, it's extremely well thought out. I think that's probably my favorite thing about Vanquist as a company. They have thought ahead in how somebody's gonna use this product and not gone over the top with it. Some of these bag companies will just put Molly on any empty space on a bag just because Vanquist doesn't do that. They, they think about how the product's gonna be used and designed to that use case. And that's, that's what I appreciate the most. Um, and just spending a little bit of time with this bag, like this, 
has been awesome. I've grabbed it like this every single time like that. It just feels right. Um, and for me, the way I use these bags is, you know, I use it as a pouch in my backpack. So I keep the stuff I use in this regularly in here, but it stays in my bag as a backpack. And the strap on the, the bum bag kind of gets in the way, gets a little bit annoying. But with this, you can just slap that off and throw it in this back pocket. And then you don't have to worry about that strap until you're ready to use it as a bag, which is what I should probably do right now. Just throw it back there, out of the way, and then you have just a pouch. The Tyco pouch is a big win, in my opinion. This is not anything new, but um, I've actually wanted to try one of these out for a while. And I've uh, harassed our good buddy John at Benchmade more than enough, um, and he came through. So thank you, John. I'm sorry, not sorry for all the, the crap I've given you, but uh, hey, I fed you some really good beef tenderloin, so uh, we're even now, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe? Kind of? Not really. Mm, probably, <laughs> probably not even close. Uh, this is the station knife, and it's on their customizer, and this is pretty much the one I would build on the customizer. Um, one thing I would change is probably just a stone wash blade, but I don't mind this, honestly, because I rust everything and it's probably gonna save me, especially if you use this like camping or out and about. I've already rusted my LT right knives because they're tool steel. Very nice chef knife that would be good in any kitchen or a camper setup like I've got. And it has a, just a little sheath to keep it from stabbing you. Sheaths are good, even for kitchen knives, right, Joseph? Next up, we have a utility knife that has been in the making for a long time, actually. Uh, you can tell who it is just from the pocket clip. This is a Chavez Chubb OTF. I think they became available at the show for the very first time. They're a little bit spendy, not gonna lie. $300 for a utility knife, that's a lot. But I learned after the fact that these are actually made in Utah. They're making them in-house. The only thing for me is probably the size. It's bulky. I mean, you know I've carried the TPT slide for a long time. This is effectively like carrying another small knife. So uh, we'll see if it gets pocket time. I'm probably gonna throw it in the pocket after this video and we'll see how long it lasts. Chavez Chubb. I've always loved the Chubbs. Mm. I'm just gonna end it there. Uh, and then this one is a very cool collaboration uh, between two great guys and two great designers, Justin Lundquist and Evan Nicolaitis. If you're not familiar with Evan Nicolaitis or not that name, that is SNX Knives, and he is just clearing house at every Blade show. He is winning awards left and right. He won another award this year, and rightfully so, the knife he won that award with was ridiculous. Like, stupid. Even Evan was like, this thing's so stupid. Like, that's why I wanted to build it, because it was stupid. But it's not stupid in the traditional sense. It's stupid in how cool it is. Um, I can't explain it, like a, let's just put it up. We're gonna show it on screen because it's just cool. It's a huge slip joint, like 10 inch, 10 inch slip joint and it had a corkscrew on it and some other shit. Like it's, it's cool, Evan's a boss and he's working with Justin on this knife company now, which is Dedalius and this is called The Lab. It's a front flipper with liners, aluminum scales and uh, 154 CM blade steel. Almost forgot what blade steel. Well, I read it. I did forget. Good told time. you, told you, you can't hold anything against me in this video. <laughs> My brain has left the building. Um, all of this for 150 bucks. It's pretty damn good. There's not many modern traditional knives that are less than like $300. So this is one of those and it's really sick. I love the bronze and black. He told me that they had at least one or two models that I would probably really like. And I went straight to Dedalius. I saw this one and grabbed it. So I, I bought this one and uh, I'm glad I did. It's sick. So that is the Dedalius lab. Rick Valdez is, is a man of class, okay? Rick, if you're watching this, you told me when I walked up to your booth that when I said you were a man of class that I probably said that to everybody else I saw that day, but that's not true. Rick is a classy dude and Picasso is making gentleman knives. Uh, and they're they're beautiful and you're gonna see exactly what I mean once we get this out of the bag This is the Seton s-e-a-t-o-n And it is this was in my opinion. I told Rick this that this was the Classiest coolest looking knife on his table and he has some really cool stuff there But this one's really cool because it's a blackout marbled carbon fiber and it is a liner lock with a single thumb stud and no clip so um 
I don't know if it's public information yet, but Rick did tell me there's one coming with a clip, which is very neat. But this is a really, really good looking knife. Like, damn, if I can get a slip that fits this thing, this will be my new like dress up knife for sure. It's, it's sexy. So the other thing, these are both the same thing, but two different blade shapes. This might help shed some light on who and what Akaso is. So they're not trying to be like really anybody else in my opinion. Um, and this is proof of that. This is a desk knife. And that's what it's called, the desk knife. They have a drop point and a Warncliffe. But what makes these so cool, other than how cool they look with this setup, is that they are also scissors. It's a little finicky, like learning how to use them, but they work, right? They work really well as scissors, but it's actually two chisel ground knives. So, I mean, it looks like that, right? But well, when it's together, it looks like one thick knife, but it's two chisel ground knives. So this is intended to be like a letter opener, right? You just open your mail or cut a thread or whatever. Gentlemanly stuff. I don't know anything about being a gentleman, but these are very cool, very unique. And that's the Acaso desk knife. All right, this next item could honestly have a video to itself and maybe we'll go into more detail later. I don't know. But this is the Roxon Flex and it's a pretty interesting little tool. Uh, just a little multi-tool and you can use this to eject your tools and then they can lock open, right? And it uses in function, kind of a similar lock system to Leatherman in that this is just holding something in place, but to disengage the lock, you do have to use this, which is a little weird. It's not the most easy to use. And here you saw it, it's just kind of, it's slick. It's moving around in my hand. You have spring-loaded pliers, you have replaceable cutters. Um, it's cool. But the real feature here is that you can customize it. You may have seen this before, maybe not but you can take this all the way up here. Let's get the scissors as well. And see, that's what I mean. Like the scissors don't want to come out of there. Um, and what you can do, ooh, it's a scalpel blade shooting down towards my hand, is you can push this, you rotate these around, and you can take all the tools off. And the reason is because Roxxon makes all these, all these tools um, that you can swap in and out and make the tool yourself. So when you buy this, it actually ships with spacers and there are no additional tools in it. And then you build your own. So you have a screwdriver. If you want a screwdriver, you can put this in here. It takes up almost the entire side, but you have a quarter inch bit that you can flip around. Um, so you can really just make the tool what you want it to be. On this side, I have a T8 and a T6 Torx, a fixed Phillips, and then a diamond plate with a coarse and a fine diamond. The tricky part with the Roxxon is like, you, you have a limitation, and I, I guess the best way to show that is here. Um, it does ship with this pouch if you want that, but uh, this shows you, you have 10 slots, and then this shows you how much expenditure I guess each tool has. Um, they come with color coding. I got rid of all the packaging, which was maybe short-sighted on my part, but I was trying to make this easier to show you. Um, but if the color coding is blue, it takes up five slots. So this one would probably be blue, right? This is huge, how thick it is. Red is one slot, green is one slot, but you also have different lengths. So you have a short tool and then you have long tools like the file or the blade, you have a knife, blade on this one that you could put in there and the saw. So those are long tools. You have short tools and then you have kind of in between. So you have to kind of play around with the different tools and figure out what fits where. Again, very affordable, but by the time you add, okay, let's say you have 10 slots, $40 multi-tool and each of these tools is three to five or three to $8. So we'll say $5, you have 10 slots. You could easily spend another 50 on your tools, so you're already at $100. So are you, you're not necessarily saving money, but you are building something that is tailored to what you want. I don't know. It, it's, I haven't fully wrapped my head around it. I definitely don't love this thing, but I do like the, con, the concept or the idea. So that's where I'm at on it. And that's the Roxxon Flex. So you can check it out. They're shipping out their pre-orders right now, but they said that the, the tool and these tools will be available for purchase in the next couple of weeks. So 
you can check it out if it's something you're really interested in, but I do think it's like kind of teetering that line between practical, cool, and something that probably just needs a little bit more refinement. Maybe I'm being too harsh, I don't know. Tell me what you think in the comments. All right, there's one more thing that I got at Blade Show that is not gear, it's not a tool or a knife or anything like that. I, let, let me just show you, I'll be right back. This right here, uh, one, we have a video coming. We had a lot of fun with this one. Um, I can get, maybe turn it down this way. If you don't remember what this is, we did a test your EDC board at Salt Lake um, for Blade Show West. Zach and I, we showed up and uh, did it again this year. Uh, but Zach is on the road. If you're not following along, he is hiding a whole bunch of workshop quest boxes all over the country for the next several months. And this was riding along in his truck. And I don't know if he wants it back or not, but I stole it. Now he asked me to bring it here. Uh, frankly, I wanna hang it on the wall here. So one, this was to show you the board's still alive for now. We had a lot of fun with it at Blade Show. So stay tuned for that video. It'll be like another week or two before that video comes out. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm excited to have this here. I don't know if Zach wanted me to keep it, but <laughs> <It's> right. <laughs> I'm keeping it. It needs to be on this wall right here behind us. Um, this board's legendary now. And you guys, anybody who tried this board, you're also a legend. So but that's it. Blade Show Atlanta this year was incredible. It's the best time I've had at Blade Show. It felt amazing. There were so many of you there. It was always nice to meet all of you guys. I don't know if we're going to do another Preparinator 3000. Not sure what we could do next year, but... I don't know. All I'll say is stay prepared because you never know what we're going to do next. But thank you guys for watching. Let me know what your favorite thing that we picked up from Blade Show is. And maybe if you want to see more about it or what we missed, let us know if there was something cooler at Blade Show that we missed. Because I know for a fact I missed a lot. I was the busiest I've ever been at Blade Show and I missed a lot. So let us know what the coolest thing was in the comments down below. That's it. I'll see you in the next video. And until then, carry on. And also, stay tuned for uh, Workshop Quest. We're going to be hiding the box soon. So, see you guys.